going on, everybody? It is Thursday, May 31st. I cannot believe it's June tomorrow. Not that it matters. And uh, we've got an okay slate. Fun pitching. Um, big time hitters. A crap day slate, <laughs> apparently. Uh, yesterday was like meh for me. Nothing interesting. Uh, Scherzer kind of broke the slate on FanDuel. So, uh, yeah, I'm on to the next one. Jake, what's going on? Not much. Yeah, I'm excited about the pitching. Uh, some some good guys in the mid tier, I think. Uh, I got a couple that I don't think people will really be on, so I'm excited to make a bunch of lineups for this slate and hopefully win some money here. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of pumped for the slate, and I don't know why. It's, I, I don't it's just, know if it's uh, just another day of, like, playing the, DFS. The teams that I like are teams that I want to like cheer for in dfs so i don't know we're yeah. gonna start with probably the most popular one there we go yankees Yank and orioles yeah, yeah. yankees 5.7 run implied total orioles 4.5 it's a 61 percent chance to win for the yanks uh sunny gray going for new york andrew kashner going for baltimore um not looking at kashner all that much uh, Sonny Gray is the guy that's popping up for me on DK. Looks solid. $6,700 price point is kind of wild. Like, I'm surprised it's that low. But I think he looks good. I'm not super worried about the Orioles. They haven't been good against righties this year. Uh, so I'll run out a decent amount of Sonny Gray. But this game is for the bats. Yeah, so Gray, um, I'm not really looking to play him at 6700 I think he's going to be over owned for how bad he's been really um he's getting lit up by righties the chase rates down getting some swings and misses but not a lot of like true whiffs so i'm a little concerned about gray i i think that price will get him into being one of the chalkier pitchers in that price range um i don't know i mean i like the baltimore bats a little bit the top four machado Jones, Scope. Um, oh, I didn't see Jace Peterson leading off. He let off yesterday too, right? Uh, I have no sure idea. Did. That sounds yeah. right to me. Anyways. Yeah, so, I mean, I like the two through four, really. I'm, I'm not a big Jace Peterson guy. But leading off for 2,600, I guess you can make a case for that. And then, like, we don't really need to talk that much about the Yankees' bats. They're an awesome play. Yeah. Six run total. Um, Casher doesn't have anything that's going to break hard away from righties, from what I'm seeing. He doesn't really um, have anything. Yeah, yeah, very, very <laughs> underwhelming stuff. I mean, he can be frustrating at times, but not as much this year. He's getting hit pretty hard. The Yankees are going to be the most owned stack, I would think, but great hitting environment, assuming this one, assuming the rain holds off in this one, and then just a really, really deep lineup all the way through Torres. Yeah, the rain is the only issue here. Um, it's the only game that I have any fear that could not happen just because of how heavy it looks to be happening from like the 5 to 11 window. Uh, that's the only thing that would really give me any pause for Sonny Gray. Um, we'll see closer to the game how much postponed risk there is. If it's just rain delay risk, then I'll, I'll go wild on the bats. Um, they're my number one stack on both sites right now. Gardner, Judge, Bird, Stanton, Sanchez are basically going to max out for me. And then uh, Gregorius looks pretty good on uh, DK. Not as great of a price on FanDuel, but I still get there. Uh, Miguel Andujar is $1,000 cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK, so he pops up a lot on, on that site. And then uh, Austin Romine um, looks like an okay catcher as part of a Yankee stack. I can't get enough of them. I mean, uh, I love taking people against Andrew Kashner, so I will be doing that barring any really weird weather changes. Yeah, it's it's hard not to. Even if it's even if the game looks dicey, I mean, probably a good idea to have some good or a few Yankees stacks just because if it plays, like you're not really worried about hitters in delays or anything. Um, and this is probably the top stack of the night. I mean. Going by run total, it is by far, but um, just a really, really good spot for Yankees bats. Yeah, and I do get a little bit of Orioles, which is uh, kind of crazy to me. 
I, mean, uh, I got a lot of Jace Peterson, 2,300 or 2,600, depending on which site you're on. So lead off, 4.5 run implied total. That's, that'll be really popular for me. Um, as long as I don't see any crazy ownership for him, um, I will have a decent amount of Jace Peterson. If he's going to be like 18% owned or something as a weird one-off, then I won't be, I won't be over him. But uh, I definitely want to have some exposure there. And I think Chris Davis is a nice option. 2,400 on FanDuel, 2,800 on DK. Um, you know, just as a guy that could go yard, even though he's been, I think, still really bad. Yeah. Agreed. But ultimately, Yankees, number one stack on both sites for me right now. So can't get enough. Yeah. But, I mean, we could just say, look at the run total. Like, you know what kind of ownership you're getting into, so it's fine. I want to see what Chris Davis's uh, current batting line is. I think it's bad. Oh my god, it's way worse than I expected. What is it? He's hitting 156, 239 on base, 244 slugging, a 31 weighted runs created plus in 200 plate appearances. This isn't even like. That's fire. That's not even like a small sample. That's really no, that's, atrocious. That's How do you slug two forty four when that's like the thing you're known for? I don't know. That's he's got a zero eight nine ISO, which is like Billy Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, he's very, very ungood. And like Chris Davis doesn't run like Billy Hamilton, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, Cubs and Mets. Cubs, 4.5 run implied total. Mets, uh, 3.5. It's a 61% chance to win for the Cubs. Jose Quintana going for Chicago. Seth Lugo going for the Mets. Uh, Quintana's my dude today. Probably my favorite option pitching-wise on the entire slate. Uh, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, I hope that I can be over the field on him. I don't, I don't have really a, a good vibe of where he'll be. We'll have some ownership projections uh, sometime in the middle of this show. But I'm going to be having as much Quintana as I can. Uh, where do you land on that? Yeah, I'm not the biggest Quintana guy, but a lefty against the Mets is always appealing to me. So, like, they have one of the lowest WRC pluses, high strikeout rates, all that. And then Quintana had a really good start. In his last start, as far as missing bats, 13.3% swing strike rate, 34% O swing percentage. So those are two things that I like to see out of Quintana. Um, low run total for the Mets. Quintana's going to be popular, I think. I thought he'd be more in like the 9K price range, just like before I even saw the pricing and just looked at the schedule. Yeah. Uh, but for 7,500, he's going to be very, very popular. I don't think, or I don't know if people realize how bad the Mets are against lefties but Dude, it's atrocious they're, 310 they're... slugging that's 100 points <laughs> yeah. below league average they've There's... got an iso of 095 which is basically a full team of chris davis <laughs> yeah they're garbage um 27 no... percent k rate i love it i love it i'm talking to myself i might put 100 percent quintana in today <laughs> there's no getting around it they're just terrible um i mean i don't know if you need to go all in but no i, I wouldn't actually do that i've got a couple guys I think you can pivot to, but I think Quintana is one of the safer options on the slate. Just the way he pitches, and then this matchup is really, really awesome. It's re Honestly, it's like as good as it gets. Yeah. The, the Mets have the highest strikeout rate on the slate of for like any particular matchup. So Mets versus lefties. Like that's higher than any other option of the day. Their slugging is... 40 points lower, no, 35 points lower than the next lowest team. It's just like, wow. they are bad everywhere. Weighted runs created plus of 70 is just, oh my god. <laughs> it is kind of crazy to think that Chris Davis could make the Mets worse. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a ton of Quintana. That's just going to be me. And uh, I don't really have any bats in this game couple one-off options but this isn't a game i'm stacking up 
Yeah. Uh, I like the Cubs bats. It's going to be a bullpen game for the Mets, it looks like. I don't think Lugo's going to go super long here. So if you want to go with a Cubs stack, I don't mind it. The Mets have like an average bullpen. Um, I just don't know who they're going to face after Lugo. So that's going to be something I'll look into or try to figure out who's going to come in after him. But the Cubs just have a really good middle of the lineup. So if you want to stack them, I don't think they'll be crazy owned. Um, I think that's a fine option too. Yeah, like Schwarber looks pretty good. 3,900 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. I would look that direction or Zobrist. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Anthony Rizzo. I like the Cubs as more one-off options than I do as like a full-on stack. That's fair. Uh, Pirates and Cardinals. Pirates... 3.9 run implied total. Cardinals 4.6. 58% chance to win for the Cardinals. Uh, Trevor Williams going for Pittsburgh. Jack Flaherty going for St. Louis. Um, I'm not really on either of the pitchers here. Uh, I think Flaherty is quite overpriced on DK. Um, I, I probably won't have more than like a lineup or two on either side for Flaherty. But I, I'd rather just have Cardinals bats. Yeah, Flaherty, like you, like you said, just a little bit overpriced for me. Um, just worried about his upside at that price. Like the Pirates are bottom three in MLB and K percentage against righties over the last 30 days or so. They're just an overall below average matchup. And then I don't see like great swing and miss stuff just yet from Flaherty. He's at home and he's like a pay up to be contrarian guy, but <clears throat> I probably won't get to him much. So... Probably no Flaherty for me, and then definitely no Trevor Williams for me. Um, I like Tommy Pham against him, just crushing righties lately, 94.2 mile an hour average exit velocity. Um, And then Matt Carpenter leading off. Like This game is kind of a stay away for me outside of a couple hitters. I love the hitters. Cardinals are my one, two, well, let's sort it by ownership. Cardinals are my fourth most owned stack on FanDuel. They're fifth on DK. And there's a big big drop off after the Cardinals on DraftKings. So uh Matt Carpenter, obviously, exceptional play today. Um you mentioned Tommy Pham. I think he looks great. Marcelo Zuna is two hundred dollars cheaper on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel. Uh he'll be one of my more popular plays of the day. Uh Jed Jerko and Dexter Fowler both popping up quite a bit for me on FanDuel. Just Really good price points. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of the Cardinals. I'm pretty happy about it, too. Just not too worried about Trevor Williams. Uh, yeah. The uh, lack of a K rate is uh, concerning. So Cardinals have the opportunity to put a bunch of balls in play. Yeah, I mean, I might sneak in a couple secondary Cardinal stacks, but I think I'm just going really heavy on the stacks that I really, really like, like the Yankees, like the Astros. So I'll have some Cardinals, but... Um, You'll probably have more than I do as far as full stacks go. Okay. And then uh, you can get to like an okay-ish Pirates stack on DK. Uh, Harrison, Cervelli, Marte, and Josh Bell. I think it's mostly due to their positions. Um, You know, you can go get a catcher, a second baseman that leads off, uh, a relatively cheap first base option, and then Starling Marte is just kind of good in general. Um, so I don't have a huge problem there because I'm not really worried about Flaherty, but that would be the extent of it. I wouldn't be trying to get too cute with the Pirates. Me either. Uh, I like Dickerson for 3,900. Just hits righties incredibly hard. I'm fine with As, that. Yeah. So that would be probably my main target. And then I don't think I'll get to a, a Pirates stack. Yeah. Like Dickerson, Bell, Cervelli, Harrison, I'd be okay with. Just because you're checking off positions that are relatively unique. It's not a first baseman and three outfielders or something. That's fair. I like those sort of weird stacks where it makes puzzle pieces elsewhere fit together. Like the Pirates would go well with the Yankees. Well, maybe not so much the Yankees because of Sanchez. I don't know what I'm saying. I like them. It's fine. Uh, Nats and Braves. Nats, 4.2 run implied total. Braves, 4.3 It's a 52% chance to win for the Braves. 
Tanner Roark going for Washington. Sean Newcomb going for Atlanta. Uh, I'll have a little bit of Newcomb. I'm kind of excited about that. I don't normally get to him. And then I might have a line or two of, of Roark. Uh, it's kind of weird. I like Newcomb as a pitcher, but I really like the Nats bats. At least on DK. Uh, Nats are my third most owned stack on DraftKings. They're just... They've just got a really good price point. Uh, again, a couple guys that are under their FanDuel prices. So I'll have both sides of this game on DraftKings quite a bit. Um, I like. Did you say you like Roark? Uh, not particularly. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I missed that. Um, Most yeah, I like Newcomb. the. Yeah, I don't mind Newcomb. Uh, it's not the perfect matchup against the Nationals. The righties are tough they hit lefties really well and then you got bryce harper and juan soto as your lefties get to face so just not the easiest lineup for anyone to navigate um newcomb has good stuff he could have a good start uh i wonder how owned do you think newcomb's gonna be i guess we don't have the ownership projections out just yet but yeah, if you had to guess that. um let's see I could see him being, like, the fourth most owned pitcher behind Kershaw, Nola, and Quintana. Kershaw, Nola, and Quintana. Okay. Um, Maybe in, like, the 15%-ish range? Yeah. I mean, I don't really like a ton of bats against him, so that makes me more want to use him. I mean, I like Rendon and Trey Turner a little bit, but I think Newcomb should have the advantage over especially the bottom of that lineup. So I don't know. I'm sort of indifferent as far as playing him for 8,100. And then I like some of these Braves bats against Roark. Um, it's an all right matchup as far as steals go. So any NCRT, Albies, and then you got Freddie Freeman and Marcakis. I like those top four for the Braves. Hold on, Tom just messaged me. We're not going to have main slate issues. They're ha they're having issues with the uh, the import program. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, guys. No ownership projections for this uh, video, so you just have to assume that we know what we're talking about. It'll be like every other video we've done except for yesterday's. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I'm loving the Nats bats for real on DK. Uh, Turner... Is I'm getting a ton of, as I usually do, but it's just that lead-off shortstop option that's really hard to avoid. And now getting the benefit of the platoon advantage is always good. Harper's Harper. Uh, I'll be over the field on him, and I normally am. Shout out to his home run yesterday. Uh, speaking of home runs, you, nobody got one yesterday, I'm assuming? I'm trying to think who mine was. I don't think... We got. I gotta be better at this. Mm. Didn't I have... Kurt we also Suzuki. guys from the same. Oh movie. yeah, yeah. Kurt Suzuki had a goose egg. So uh, let me pull that, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Braves only scored one run. I had Jay Bruce. I know he had a double. <laughs> he went one for three with a run scored and a walk. I'll take it. Yeah, he was fine. I, I saw. The only person to hit a home run. The only guy that I said I wasn't that interested in yesterday. Camargo. <laughs> yeah, dude, that guy's raking lately. Um. Anyway, back to the Nats. Uh, I get a ton of Juan Soto, as per usual. It's just a great price point. Um, and then I get a lot of Severino as a catcher option. Uh, he'll be part of my stack. So I'm going to end up with a lot of Nats unless something weird changes. I'm kind of surprised by it, but they grade out really, really well for me. And it's mostly yeah, just DK. Yeah, I'll probably just, just stick with some Rendon and Trey Turner. Probably won't stack. The Nationals against Newcomb. Newcomb's guy I have respect for. Yeah, I like him. I'm really glad we picked him up. Uh, Phillies and Dodgers. Phillies 2.8 run implied total. Dodgers 3.7. What a game. 61% uh, chance to win for the Dodgers. If you're looking for a pitching matchup, this should be it. Aaron Nola going for Philly. Clayton Kershaw going for uh, L.A. I mean, for anybody to say that they don't like one of the pitchers in this game would be kind of crazy. You know, Kershaw just coming off the DL, so you do want to pay attention to if there, any news comes out about the length of time that he can throw. That's really the only barrier here. Otherwise, I mean, you're getting two 
high-end pitching options. Dodgers, nothing to worry about from a bat's perspective, really. Uh, this game is only pitching for me. I expect to have as much ownership of Nola and Kershaw as I cap out at today. Yeah, Nola, especially for me, um, he's just been really good over his last five starts. He's gone at least six innings, gotten 10Ks a couple times, or over 10Ks, um, and I don't mind targeting against the Dodgers. So I'll have a healthy amount of Aaron Nola um, just showing really good strikeouts tough lately, and then we know how bad this Dodgers lineup can be at times. So Noel will be the guy I'll be over the field with. And then Kershaw, I'm a little worried about him. He wasn't the same Kershaw in his first seven starts of the season. And then he's making his first start in almost a month. Um, just at a 30% chase rate, 11.7% swinging strike rate, and then 64th in whisper swing this year. So... I mean, he doesn't need to be the same Kershaw to pay off at this price against the Phillies at home, but I just don't know if he has, like, that huge 35, 40-point upside here. So I'll say that, but I do want some Kershaw, especially if there's no Reese Hoskins again, then, like, he's he becomes a much better play for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't dislike Kershaw, but I'm not all in on him or anything tonight. I'll keep an eye on the run total. If the Phillies stay right at that 2.8 area, if they go to like 2.9 or something, that's fine. But like, if it's going to be that low, then I'm going to assume Kershaw's expected to go deep into that game. Yeah. Because if he was on like a 75 pitch limit or something, I think that Phillies 2.8 would be like 3.2. Yeah. So that'll be my barometer. Just keeping an eye on that line. If it doesn't move in any direction, then I'll I'll go full steam ahead on on Kershaw. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that's fair. <clears throat> and, Vegas probably knows better than we do. Yeah. Same same scenario for Nola. Uh, I'll have a bunch of him. Do you like any hitters in this game? No, I don't have a single bit of either side of it. Okay. I'm a, if if Hoskins is in the lineup, I would have some one-offs of him and all fair against Kershaw, just because I'm assuming Kershaw's going to get really heavy ownership, and I think it's a okay leverage spot. Yeah, I have the Phillies grading out as my worst offensive option of the entire slate, based on who's in the lineup right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Dodgers are Kershaw far behind either. Yeah. All righty. Indians and... Uh, Jake's 4.6 run implied total for the Indians, 4.4 for the Jake's. Uh, Justin Bieber's brother Shane going for Cleveland, 52% yeah. chance to win. Uh, Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota. Uh, Justin Bieber's brother does not have a uh, salary on either site, so just in case you were trying to play him, don't bother. I know he's in the player pool. He is? Yeah. Really? 7,300 on DraftKings. Maybe I spelled Bieber wrong. Is it the same as our buddy Justin? or? Why is he not coming up? He's, he might not be he's on 7,300. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's there. So let me add him to my player list while we're, while we're doing this. <clears throat> uh, I'll just go ahead and do what you want to do right now. Okay. Get well, it out of the way. Yeah, so I actually have an interest in both pitchers here. Um, and that's... Probably sounds pretty stupid in a 9.5 total game, but Bieber is making his for his MLB debut. Uh, he's been really, really awesome in the minors. He's got 10 starts, a 1.10 ERA, and then just threw seven no-hit innings with seven strikeouts in his last start. Uh, just reading on some stuff. I think it was MLB.com just to credit that, uh, those stats. He's just a top prospect. Um like, he could definitely be an option here for Cleveland. It's just a spot start, so there, there shouldn't be any, like, pitch count or anything. He just threw pretty much a full start on Friday. Um, the matchup isn't great against the Twins, but for 7,300, low-ish ownership, I'm assuming. Um, I'll take a chance on on Bieber. So, and then, oh, you were talking about Odorizzi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Odorizzi. <laughs> Odorizzi just didn't. He's been getting a ton of chases, swinging strikes, the whole deal, everything that I refer to. And 
So I was just seeing if he was playable in the spot. There's a five-round total for the Indians. So that turned me off. But I looked at some stuff on Fangraphs, and in the split on the road against right-handed pitching this year, the Indians have a 25.3% K rate, a 73 WRC+, plus, and the league's lowest on-base percentage, which is 275. Um, I don't know if that will keep up, but it's at least enough to make me interested in Odorizzi because we're a couple months into the season now, a decent sample size in that split for them. Um, I mean, I'm really worried about the top three hitters, Lindor, Brantley, and Ramirez, but Odorizzi has been pretty good. He's, he's been missing bats. There's no doubt about it. Uh, so it won't take much for me to be over the field. I just want to know how much over the field by the time we get to lock. Yeah, so noted Minnesota Twins homer, uh, Jake taking his fellow Jake here. Uh, he's out of his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I have zero Odorizzi. I will have zero Odorizzi. And I will be absolutely pounding the Indians. Number three stack for me on FanDuel. Number two stack for me on DK. Um, I will not be flying my flag with the Minnesota Jakes today. So I'm really yeah. anxious to see how this game shakes out. No, I mean, I like. I don't think it's the most optimal play, but like, I think he could. Like, I think he has a decent chance to outscore Quintana if something doesn't go perfectly for Quintana. Jesus. I think that. Uh, I think that Odorizzi has the stuff to. Like, I don't think he's even going to get a caper inning, but he could go pretty deep if he's missing some bats. So, yeah. <laughs> The, the run total scares me for sure. The Indians lineup scares me, specifically the top three. So that's where I would go if I'm targeting against Odorizzi. But uh, I'll have both sides, some exposure to both sides for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mashing the Indians. Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez, and Encarnacion. Huge for me. Uh, they'll max out. Uh, on FanDuel, I like Yonder Alonso and Melky Cabrera quite a bit. Uh, Jason Kipnis pops off a little bit for me. Jan Gomes will work as a catcher on DK. Uh, I'll just I'll have a, an overwhelming amount of Indians. I've got Odorizzi 8.6 points behind Quintana, which is almost like what I expect him to put out. Right. This is another one of those ownership things, I think. Quintana is going to be very, very chalky. So let's say Quintana is 40% and Odorizzi is 4%. I think that more than like one out of 10 times Odorizzi outscores him in this spot. So it's, it's an ownership thing. And just, I don't think people realize that Odorizzi has been pretty solid lately. Yeah. Uh, that, that I agree with from an ownership perspective. Uh, Bieber doesn't really have uh, any sort of crazy stuff. He's more of a control guy uh, projects to have like big time command, but he's okay. like mostly average pitches. Uh, got a decent curveball. Um, super, super low walk rate in his minors history. Like, less than one in every stop he's made. Uh, so he's just, you know, pinpoint control. Um, that gets tricky in the majors. Uh, sometimes that runs pretty well. I don't know if he's got, like, some deception in his delivery. I picture guys like Yusmero Petit. Uh, he was a guy that had like a microscopic walk rate coming up, but just super hittable in the majors. So I'm anxious to see it. I don't know. I don't really know much about him. He was what's it, fifth. Let's see. Where'd that go? Yeah, he was the fifth ranked prospect for the Indians coming into the year. So I'm anxious to see how he does. But I'll have Indians bats in abundance. Minnesota Jakes are not for me tonight. Yeah, I think that's fair if you don't want to ride with me. Um, <laughs> but I gave you the reasons why I'll be over the field at Odorizzi. So uh, what about the Minnesota Bats? Did we talk about them much? I, I like Kepler and Rosario. Just really good hitters, I think, against righties. Um, I don't really have any part of the Twins outside of some Dozier. Uh, and I probably won't even have that. Uh, I'm just really not looking at the Twins all that much. Okay. That's... Uh, that's fair. Sorry to do this to you. No, I I get it. 
Uh, all right, Red Sox and Astros. This one blew my mind. Uh, 3.8 run implied total for the Red Sox, 5.2 for the Astros. It's a 64% chance to win for the Astros. Drew Pomeranz going for Boston. Lance McCullers going for Houston. Um, I don't get to any pitching here. That's the first thing that really surprised me. Uh, I guess it's probably just McCullers' price point that's getting me. Um, but I'm really surprised at how big of a favorite the Astros are. Uh, I guess mentally I'm dramatically overrating Pomeranz. Uh, I love the Astros. Today. They're my number two stack on one of these sites. Yeah, I think the Astros are my number one. Um, I think my they'll number be, one on FanDuel. They'll be less on than the Yankees if that game looks like it's going to play, I would think. And just, what, eight righties against Pomeranz? And Pomeranz has a 5.09 XFIP and a whip over two against righties. So just allowing a ton of base runners. Uh, he's allowing a lot of hard hits to righties and then just gets to face all righties. So, like, I mean, who? where are you stopping your Astro stack at? Because I'm going all the way through... Stassi probably. I don't like playing Marisnik. For a number nine hole hitter, he gets played probably the most out of anyone. Uh, um, I don't think I'll play much Marisnik, so I'll probably double dong. Uh, but one through eight, really, I'm just all over the Astros. I don't even know. I think my favorite is Correa or Springer, um, but not really discriminating against anyone in this lineup. I'll have a ton of Astros. Yeah, so... First four, Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa. I don't really have to say anything else. They're, I'm going to have my max exposures to those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really get all that much else on DK, oddly enough. But on FanDuel, tons of Gurriel. He's only $2,600, $900 cheaper than he is on DraftKings. I get a ton of JD Davis, $2,100. So only $100 above the minimum. $1,500 cheaper than he is on DraftKings. So... Tons of J.D. Davis. And then I'll get a lot of Marisnik. Uh, minimum salary on FanDuel. I don't love the idea of playing him because I'm not super enthused with his talent. But at minimum salary, as part of a 5.2 run implied total, and rotate it into some of these stacks, I'll have him. Only guys I'm not really touching are Marwin Gonzalez and Stassi. And I'm really surprised about Stassi, but I think... No he's Stassi? No, uh, 3%. He's been Oh, man, he's been crushing lefties this year. Yeah, I'm, honestly, have... I'm, I'm pretty surprised that it's as low as it is because usually the catcher comes along for the ride on DK stacks, but for some reason, not so much here today. Oh, wow. I'll be getting more more stats in there. Um, the thing with McCullers is, is like he's another ownership pivot. If Quintana's going to – like this all sort of depends on Quintana for me. If he's going to be like 50% owned or something crazy, 60% owned, then I'll be pivoting my exposure in other places, like Odorizzi I mentioned, and then McCullers, although he's not really in the same price range, he's $1,400 $1, more expensive on DraftKings, but like McCullers just has crazy talent, and he can, he can have a really good start here in a tough spot. The Red Sox are probably the worst matchup for a right-handed pitcher, but um, he's just I'll just bet on the talent and bet against the chalk if... Quintana's going to be crazy, crazy chalk. Yeah, I get that. There will be some massaging to my exposures if Quintana's number is way higher than I would expect. Or if, like, Newcomb so, is super high compared to McCullers. Yeah, that too. Yep. I think McCullers uh, becomes a bit more of an option. Agreed. So I'll be... Like, this is one of those days where... I mean, I'm always looking at the ownership projections that we have, but... I'll be very locked into our ownership projections because I think they've been pretty accurate lately. Um, so. so in a sentence I didn't think I would say here, I have like no interest in Red Sox bats. Yeah, dude. Uh... Unless McCuller somehow has like really crazy ownership, I can't imagine having much Red Sox. Neither can I. I mean... So has McCullers even like gotten blown up? I think one time he's had like he just doesn't have it. Uh, one time he just did not have it at all, and I think he let up like six in 
Oh wait, no. Oh, he last just got start. bombed in his last. Start. Yeah. He's gotten bombed twice this year. Twice. Yeah. So I was thinking of the first one against the Twins. I mean the Jakes. <laughs> I was like, um, no. But like you'll he'll have these starts where he just does not have the command and it just goes south very fast. So if you want to stack up Red Sox, that's fine. But I'll be looking at like Benintendi or Betts or JD one offs. Um, I'm not expecting McCullers to have another terrible start like he just did. That was against Cleveland in his last start, and he had just faced them six days earlier. So I usually give a little bit of a bump to hitters in that scenario. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll give him a pass for that last start. I don't see anything wrong with him. Three dongs. Yeah. I mean, the velocity was down one mile per hour on his fastball, but everything else was fine. So not really concerned. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look to him. I don't have him now, but uh, once ownership gets out, it might create a spot for him. <laughs> Ugh. Marlins and Padres. Marlins 3.5 run implied total. Padres 4.1. It's a 57% chance to win for the Padres. We and Chen going for Miami. Jordan Lyles going for San Diego. I got a little bit of Lyles and a little bit of Chen. I think just because both of these offenses are so bad. Um, they'll just be guys that I like rotate into that SP2 spot. Uh, I'm not super wild about either of them. I am apparently super wild about the Padres hitters, though. On FanDuel, yeah. that is. No, I mean, I like the Padres. Um, I'm always home run hunting off Chen. I think I say that every time. He's just a guy with home run problems. Even in big parks, he'll just give up big power. So, really, the three guys I'm keying in on for San Diego are Renfro, Villanueva, and Perella. Uh, that's probably similar to what you're you're looking at. Um, oh, and then Reyes. I think Reyes has been really good, actually. Uh, just looking at game logs, but I think he's his exit velocity and stuff. I keep seeing his name come up. Um, yeah, he's hit home runs and. Three straight games, I think. There you go. Is that right? Man. So he's another guy that clearly has some power. Um, so I can get to a Padres stack here for sure against Chen. And then I like Lyles. I wonder if he's going to be a popular play at 7,100. Um, yeah, he comes up. It's just the matchup, really. He's not some sort of spectacular pitcher or anything. But can miss some bats at times. So... Like Lyles, like some Padres, not really on anything on the Marlins outside of maybe Justin Bohr. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Padres' price point on FanDuel is crazy. Like, Perella is only 2700 leading off. Love it. Hunter Renfro, Renfro 2300 Like, I'm getting him in abundance. Um, they just they have way better pricing on FanDuel than they do on DraftKings right now, so... Uh, I'll end up with way more Padres than I would have ever expected. They're my fifth most owned stack on FanDuel right now. Not something I would have yeah. normally expected. I I don't think that's bad at all, especially if you're going with Kershaw or Nola, the expensive guys. Yeah. Like, that's a really nice little stack. Then you can get in some Yankees bats, some Astros bats, or Braves bats, whichever are your favorite. Totally. Yeah, Perel will be really popular today, especially at second base. Final oh, yeah. game, Rangers and Mariners. Rangers, 3.5 run implied total. Mariners, 4.3. It's a 58% chance to win for the Mariners. Mike Miner going for Texas. Wade LeBlanc going for Seattle. Uh, I get, like, so much Wade LeBlanc, it's crazy. To the point where I thought I had a bug in my sheet. Um, I don't love it. But I'm going to have a ton of Wade LeBlanc tonight. How chalky do you think he'll be? Oh, God. I hope not that chalky. And I'm about to hit send on the Spotlight Pitchers article. But I wrote in there that it's never, like, a fun proposition to play Wade LeBlanc at when he's going to be owned. I think he'll probably be owned just because of that run total. Because people know that the Rangers suck. Yeah. At least as far as strikeouts go. They have a ton of power against lefties 214 iso over the last month um i think that's top three in the mlb in that time against lefties so 
<laughs> LeBlanc, I was looking at like the chase rate, O swing percentage. Um, he's not a great pitcher, but over the last month for qualified pitchers, and I just searched for guys that are have thrown at least 10 innings in that time, uh, he leads the MLB in O swing percentage by a wide margin, by over 2.5% over the next guy. And then the Rangers are just a super undisciplined team, so I'm not expecting a ton of strikeouts. It'd be nice if he could get a ton of strikeouts, but I think LeBlanc could just go deep. I think he can go six or seven innings here most of the time. So you throw in four lefties, them being Gallo. Is Gallo not going to be in the lineup? No. Okay. Well, still, Mazzara and Odor and Guzman, Chu, these guys will swing and miss against lefties. And LeBlanc's just been okay. So I'll have a bunch of Wade LeBlanc at 5,500. Uh, yeah, not not great. Not excited about it, but he's my guy. Yeah. Um, I just saw on ESPN that Zinedine Zidane uh, stepped down from Real Madrid. So uh, I wasn't listening to anything you said. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, basically, I'm still a little, play still a little salty at Real Madrid, uh, knocking me out of a uh, Champions League final. So, yeah, just play Wade LeBlanc is yeah. is the uh, was the theme of what I said there. I didn't know that Eovaldi got pulled while throwing a no hitter last night. He did. Yeah, <laughs> they pulled him after oh, six. He had the no no going. I was wrong on him. I was right on him. 4Ks, six innings, no hits. Uh, what do you think of Mariners' bats, particularly our boy Nelson Cruz? He's going to be owned ridiculously, right? As like a, you know, because he's Nelson Cruz and he faces a lefty. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm playing all the guys really targeted yesterday against Matt Moore. It didn't really work out, but Hanniger, Cruz, Healy, Segura, Zunino... Uh, even Seager, uh, Miners getting hit hard by lefties as well. So Mariners, a top four stack for me, very clearly. So that's, I mean, I'm kind of on the chalk stacks, the Astros, Yankees. Um, I think the Twins will be somewhat chalky. So that's why I'm trying to get different with my pitchers. I don't want to have this like 30 of the same lineups as everyone else. So uh, That makes total sense. I don't have any real Rangers bats, just a smattering of Mariners, particularly Cruz. Yeah. All right. Oh, you don't you're not stacking up the the uh, Mariners? Um, nothing crazy. They're my eighth most owned stack right now. Okay. I'll have them a little bit more so on FanDuel than anything else. Okay. Well, it's just yeah, like, I, I, I mean, really the, the eventually you just get too many teams. So, oh yeah, they're just, understandable. They're not a zero for me. That's the best I can say, like, because that happens pretty regularly. Like, there are seven teams on FanDuel where I basically don't have them at all. So, to get any sort of exposure um, is kind of a, a plus. So, I do like them. I will have them. Okay. Give me two pitchers. Let's look at a crunch. <sighs> Let's try. Let's just do Kershaw with Kershaw with Quintana. Let's try a chalky pairing. Yeah, this should be the chalkiest pairing, if I had to guess. Um, so Yanks and Nats with a one-off Jace Peterson. That's. I mean, I would do backflips for that lineup. Uh, uh -huh. Orioles and Yankees with a one-off Trey Turner. Cardinals and Yanks with a one-off Jace Peterson. Ooh, there's my uh, there's my Padres and Yankees with a one-off Rendon. I like that yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, that's uh, Kershaw and Quintana are going to be pretty popular if you can do this sort of stuff. Yeah, uh, I think for sure. And then you can do that same thing with Odorizzi or Lyles or someone in that same price range. So I'll have some Lyles, I'll have some Odorizzi, I'll have a bunch of Wade LeBlanc. <laughs> uh, I'm that sounds dirty. Nola and Newcomb. I think that's a really weird combination. I only get it once. Cardinals and Indians with a one-off Jace Peterson. 
Ozuna, okay. Carpenter, Martinez, Lindor, Brantley, Melky Cabrera. Jace Peterson's that dude for you tonight. Uh, he's just gonna. Uh, I'll have like I'll have to manually limit his exposure. He's gonna naturally rise as a one-off option because of his price point and his position. Guys like that at like second base and short. Um, I'll have like weird ownerships on my first batch through because someone will be priced at a point where they make everything fit really well. So like yeah. Peterson came up. I already limited him in my first batch. Um, I got 27% Peterson on FanDuel and 19% Peterson on DK. And like that's more 19% Peterson on DK is more than half of all of the exposure I have for the Orioles. So I'll limit, I limited him to 10, like as soon as we started talking and I saw it, um, because I don't believe you should have any one guy that much in a one-off scenario. That's, that's just too much exposure. So while he's popping up a lot now, insert random second baseman here, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Slide over to Fandle before the crazies come at me. Yeah, still no ownership projections up for us. Just the early slate, which we're not talking about because, well, just look at it. It is a two-game slate, and Ryan Carpenter and Ryan Stanek are pitching. So that doesn't scream max enter to me. No. But I'm going to min enter today, the early slate. Zero. Yeah, you can play... 80% owned Andrew Heaney, if you would like, Jesus. and 60% owned Daniel Mengden. Oh, my God. All right, so I'm going to look at Quintana. I think he's the best option on FanDuel today. Uh, we'll see how that looks for uh, ownership. But Padres are going to make a lot of stuff work. Padres, Yanks with the Trey Turner one-off. There's some Jace Peterson, just in case you didn't get enough of that on the last round for DK. Uh, I think this one looks really nice. Astros, Bregman, Correa, Marisnik, which I know you're not happy about, but uh, minimum salary on FanDuel. Yanks, Sanchez, Stanton, Gardner, and Bird, and then a one-off Perella at second base. That's, a, that's an absolutely loaded FanDuel lineup. Yeah, I, I love that. Quintana is going to be healthily, healthily owned on FanDuel up with Kershaw and Nola, I would assume. Bird, Andahar, Stanton, Gardner, <laughs> Correa, Springer, J.D. Davis, <laughs> Perella. Ugh, I'm, I'm in today. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I'm hoping one of these top three teams, uh, one of the Astros, Yankees, or Indians, is like oddly low owned. Because that'll be my, uh, I'm going to have three times the field on this shit and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, hockey, what went down yesterday? Yeah, uh, the Caps won, uh, what was it, 3-2 I think it ended up being. Yes. Another good game. Uh, it's going to be a fun series. I think it's going to be a long series too, it's six or seven games. I don't think anyone's winning three straight after watching those first two, so... Man, it's I'm I'm already sad for hockey to be over. I'm already ready for October. Um, it's always a nice break from baseball, but uh, we still got baseball to talk about. So yeah. I'll still be putting in the work. I don't want to make it seem like I I don't care about baseball because I I really do. But yeah, this is this is gonna be a really fun rest of the series. No one thinks you don't care about baseball. You spent all that time building baseball savant, man. I don't think you're gonna walk away right now. <laughs> yeah. So when are they going to start paying me? That's the real question. Because I think we give them a, a lot, bad deal. A lot of free advertising for them over there. We need to get in touch with some people. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be like, oh yeah, uh, you know, just keep saying it. We're not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, NBA is back today. Game one, Cavs Warriors. Uh, round four of that battle. Um, we'll have rankings and. Ownership projections. We'll have Chris's uh, switch and hedge. So that'll be a big event tonight. Uh, live stream tonight at 6. Uh, Jake and Chris. I will see you guys again in the morning. Do you have anything else you want to add? I think we are done so here. I think we are done, yeah. Watch, tune into the live stream. 
That's it. That's all I got, people. Best of luck tonight, and we'll talk to you later.